excuse me, do you have time for a short joke? Here's your look at the McFarlane Toys. DC Comics page punchers the Joker three-inch figure with comic. Once a small-time crook, the Joker fell into a vat of chemicals that turned his skin white, his hair green, his lips red, like a crazed clown. His crimes always involve pranks and jokes, ending with twisted punchlines that are only fun to the Joker. He may look like he's clowning around, but this guy's bad news for Batman and Gotham City. Why, hello down there. Before we get a closer look at the new Page Puncher's 3-inch Joker, and the reasoning why, by the way, he is so far away from the camera is because I'm going to be bringing in a normal-sized Joker for comparisons. I'd like to go ahead, if I can, and thank the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide this sample of Page Punker, Puncher's Joker, three inches in all, that we're having a look at in this video. Grabbing the tape measure, as far away as he may seem, taking it right to the very top of his head, he's advertised at really three inches in height, but rather he's actually more three and three quarters of an inch in height. And that works out to be a figure that's seven centimeters tall. And equally small in stature, here's what the Joker looks like with the Page Puncher's Batman. To which Batman is just a tad bit taller, if you count, of course, the points in the tops of his cowl. But they're, of course, e equal scale to one another. And again, the reasoning why I brought the camera back as far as I did was to bring in what I feel is to be a close enough comparison, at least for the color scheme that they went with. Here's what the Page Puncher's 3-inch Joker looks like, along with the DC Rebirth Joker. Poor Joker, 3 inches in all, only goes just above the knee area of the regular size Joker from the DC Rebirth. Sad to say that the only accessory that come included with Page Puncher's 3-inch Joker is a comic book. The comic book at least is good. We've got Joker number 1 from the DC Comics from the New 52. A nice cover and equally well, the nice pages of artwork on the inside of it. I really like the art styling that they did for the Joker here. And as well as the characters that inhabit his world. So of course, I've got in the middle of there some advertisements of other comics that you can pick up as well. I don't think I ever really picked up this particular issue. Unlike the Batman, I picked up already that comic long before we even had a look at the 3-inch version of him in Page Puncher style. I don't actually have this comic, so I'm going to put that along with the rest of my comics. Even though, really, I'm still tempted to put a lot of these comics, a lot of these Page Puncher figures, back into their clamshells. The neat thing about the clamshells is, again, you can easily open them and close them back up and put them on your wall. The other thing that unfortunately doesn't come with Joker is any accessories to speak of. While he may be teased by the idea he actually has himself a gripping hand that looks like it should be either holding a crowbar or perhaps a pistol, the figure unfortunately comes with neither. Getting a closer look at Joker, we're going to start first with his face. You know, again, for its size, we have to factor in just how tiny these things actually are. The paint is pretty good on him. Really clean, in fact, especially like his eyes, his eyebrows. You can see as well, there's a little bit of paint problems, but not bad, really, all things considered. I think the head sculpt is really quite good to, again, bring back in the DC Rebirth. It's not really, of course, the same head sculpt, but it's pretty close, in fact. Maybe I would even say that they took a lot of the molding cues from the original larger size version, shrunk it down, colored it obviously a little bit different. But even like the suits themselves are very similar in design with, again, the very obvious triangular build that they gave the original DC Rebirth Joker. They have skimmed back, trimmed back, some of, of course, the articulation points in the figure that we'll talk more about in a moment. But like head sculpt wise, it's pretty close to the original DC Rebirth Joker. Now, of course, with these figures, they're going to be very limited in the way of articulation. But again, for, for what we get with articulation on their figures, they're pretty good. Now, again, to put them alongside Batman, the Cape Crusader, both the Batman and the Joker figure would have only had shoulder articulation, leg articulation, and head articulation. Joker also possesses waist articulation as well. I know we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves when we're talking about the posability on the figure, but just to kind of break down, pretty simple, but still pretty effectively articulated for how tiny these guys are. Again, we already had a look at the face. Just quickly turning this around. I can only hope, I'll only know after the fact whether the camera is able to pick up as many of the details that I'm seeing right now with my naked eye. But you can again see, like, the sculpting on the Joker is quite good for as small as this may be. Of course, the coloring on his suit is very brightly handled. Bright yellow, bright green for the vest and the tied-up tie, and he's got a bright yellow there, lapel flower there on the side. Careful, don't get too close to it in case it starts squirting acid. The gloves are well painted, that you can see there in the white. I don't know whether these are actually gloves or actually just his bare hands. Yeah, on the back, of course, he's got the tail jacket, very similar to the original DC Rebirth one. 
And again, down below, while not painted the spats, they at least painted, if anything, the shoes. The, these figures, by the way, have no peg holes on the other sides. That would be just ridiculous. There'd be no way, in fact, just to grab a display stand here off to the side, the stand, there'd be no way that you could plug that into the back heel. The peg, in fact, is almost even bigger than the heel itself. For the articulation here for Joker, it's pretty much standard for what we got with the Batman that we looked at already. Just again, one last time to see you guys, show you guys what this guy looks like. I'm pretty happy with him. You know, for again, the size that he may be, just again, put him next to, say, my thumb. That's a pretty small looking figure. And yet, he manages to get a ball joint for the head, rotate it all the way around. Of course, you can bring the head down, bring it up, and you can also rock it back and forth. In addition to that, Joker pleasantly to announce that he does actually have hinge joints that allow the arms to hinge outward. They technically could have just given this guy simple five points of articulation where you'd only be able to rotate the arm all the way around. You'd only be able to rotate the legs back and forth. And while maybe the legs, yes, are more limited, you can still at least bring the arms out. I think, again, that's quite the feat for the sizing of this figure. Uh, there is no hand articulation for the obvious reasons. That'd be way too small to accommodate a peg that small. Of course, he has no elbow bend, so you wouldn't be able to bend it there. But he does have at least waist swivel. You can swivel it back and forth. There is also the little chain that would have been on the original figure. Uh, obviously, in this case, they would have only suggested it by the sculpting and not gone in there and painted it, but that's okay. Legs do hinge back and forth. Uh, they seem almost like as if they would be able to hinge out, but I think it's more so just the way it's been pegged into the lower half of their body. But yeah, and it's not a bad-looking Joker. Uh, this is not something that's going to appeal, I'm sure, to all the collectors out there. It's a niche market. But it's the niche market that enjoys tiny little collectibles. Like, I love tiny little collectibles. These are small. They're simple enough in design that you can fit them on your shelf. And again, when you have enough of these, you guys have a nice little collection going. But the beauty of this line, something I've also stated before when we looked at the Batman, is again, with this line, you don't always have to have these guys on display. You're not damaging and destroying the packaging by having to get these guys out of their plastic prisons. In fact, you can easily just put comic Joker. In fact, I just got the tray here off to the side. Just simply put him back into the packaging. Grab yourself the clamshell tray. Where do I have the clamshell tray? I think it's over here somewhere. Bring in the, well, here's Batman's, for example. But again, you just be able to open these back up, fit the tray back inside, and then you can have this display on the shelf. Here's Batman, by the way, 608. So again, I really do like this line for the simplicity of what they are. They're not super expensive either as well. I think the Joker and the Batman sit at around maybe 11 $12 if you were to find this online or in stores. And again, for what we get for a Joker, as fine as features as they may be, I think we get a nice looking Joker when all things are said and done. Prior to starting this review, I actually had Batman inside of my office hanging up on the wall inside the clamshell case along with Batman issue 608. The thing I really like about this line is the simplicity of the figures. Don't write them off simply just because they're way too small, that they don't go along with the rest of your DC Multiverse line. The charm and the appeal of this line is the fact that you're getting small-scale figures with just as much detail, I would say, as rivaling as what we would get with the DC Multiverse larger-scale figures. I did want to bring in Rebirth to show you simply that it's using the same head sculpt from what I can see in a similar style of body. The paint is a little bit different, granted. It doesn't have as much the articulation. But for as small as these figures, they pack a lot of detailing going for them. And honestly, I really wish that more companies would follow the same suit as what McFarlane's been doing here with the three-inch page punchers. Make collector-friendly packaging, please. Thank you. The seals on the side are easy to cut in these clamshell case, and you can always open them up at any given time. Take the figure out, have a look at it, pose it any which way you want. I mean, granted, there are only five points of articulation, but you can play around with the figure, put it back in the clamshell case, and hang it back on the wall. And the added bonus is not only are you getting a detailed figure, but you're also getting a good comic that goes along with it. Now, whereas I already had Batman issue 608, I don't have that issue of Joker. So all the more reason why if I do decide to take Joker and leave him out of his clamshell case, I actually have a nice looking comic that I can read and have it on the side as well. I do wish, though, moving forward, that more companies would do the, the, the process of producing collector-friendly packaging. It just makes things so much easier. You don't want to risk the destroying of a package just to get a figure out and then regret it afterwards. And yeah, I, just, I really like the way he looked inside the package. I really wish I had just left him inside. You get the benefit of both worlds here. You have a, a figure that you can have displayed loose, along with a comic that you can read, but then you can also put them all back in the clamshell case and hang it on the wall. Ultimately, I think for right now, as we've already had only a look at two of them so far here in this channel, I think Joker is ultimately going to go back in the clamshell case, not back to Arkham, but he's going to go back to the office and hang on the wall along with the Batman I already have had there. What do you guys think of the page puncher's Joker? 
have, first of all, have you guys been collecting any of these three inch page punchers? And if you have, what do you guys think of these? Let me know down below in the comments section. Once again, a big thank you to the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide this sample of the three inch page punchers Joker with comic, although comic's not here, obviously, in final looks that we could have a look at in this video. If you certainly as well enjoyed this video, want to hit it with a like. If you're loving the content you're seeing and want to stick around for more, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. We have wrapped off, chuck off the boxes on your, on your box list here. We have looked at Page Puncher's Batman. We can check that off. We've had a look at now Page Puncher's Joker. We can also check that off. We're also going to be having a look at the rest of this line of, of figures as well. So if that's the kind of thing that you guys certainly would like to see more here on this channel, then stay tuned because more will be coming your way. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.